subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia newsline i'm yesh johnson Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 11th of November. Heavy rains bring life to standstill kill at least 39 in southern India and Sri Lanka. Pakistan calls for international engagement with Afghanistan to avoid economic collapse at Troika plus meeting. And Bangladesh's first Hindu chief justice gets 11 years in jail in graft case. And now for all the details. Days of unexpected rains across India, southern Tamil Nadu state and neighboring country of Sri Lanka have killed at least 39 people, authorities said on Thursday. Weather officials in both the countries said the rainfall was expected to continue due to a depression in the Bay of Bengal. Heavy rains in parts of India's southern Tamil Nadu state have killed at least 14 people, an official said on Thursday. with weather forecasters expecting the downpours to continue and gradually ease in the next few days several areas of the state capital chennai which is india's auto manufacturing center were waterlogged and municipal workers were seen clearing uprooted trees and pumping out water from roads after incessant rainfall for the past 3 days many schools and colleges in tamil nadu remained closed while video footage showed the esi hospital in chennai flooded However doctors claim the health services were continuing unaffected India's northeast monsoon usually runs from October to December bringing heavy rain particularly to the south to a blood test lene ke liye idhar aaya hu dekhta hu to pura pani pani hai udhar main road bhi pani pani hai gaadi ghoda bhi kam chal raha hai khane peene mein bhi takleef hai sab cheez mein problem hai Meanwhile weather officials in neighboring Sri Lanka said rain there was expected to ease from Thursday as the low pressure that brought the bad weather had moved away thousands of people have been hit by heavy rains which have affected 17 of Sri Lanka's 25 districts and killed at least 25 people in flooding landslides and lightning incidents across the island nation officials said Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi at the meeting of Troika Plus comprising US, Russia, China and Pakistan said it was crucial for the international community to avoid repeating mistakes of the past and pursue positive engagements in order to avert economic collapse or an all-out civil war from breaking out in Afghanistan. Pakistan held a meeting on Afghanistan with envoys from the United States, China and Russia on Thursday as the Pakistani foreign minister warned its neighbor was on the brink of economic collapse. The grouping of countries known as the Troika Plus met formally for the first time since the Taliban took over Afghanistan on August 15. Addressing the opening session of the 2-day meeting, Pakistan's foreign minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi said engagement with Afghanistan was important as nobody wished to see a relapse into civil war and an economic collapse to spur instability must not only continue but should be enhanced for multiple reasons nobody wishes to see a relapse into civil war no one wants an economic collapse that will spur instability everyone wants terrorist elements operating inside afghanistan to be tackled effectively and we all want to prevent a new refugee crisis humanitarian agencies are increasingly raising the alarm that afghanistan is slipping into a dire humanitarian crisis as the economy slumps due to a stall in most aid and restrictions on the banking system put in place by international governments since the Taliban took over Pakistan has called on governments including the United States to allow development assistance to flow into Afghanistan to prevent collapse it has also called on them to unfreeze the billions of dollars of assets that Afghanistan's central bank has overseas 
Thursday's conference is the latest in a series of diplomatic meetings in the region. Afghanistan's Taliban-appointed acting foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki carried out a three-day visit to Islamabad to discuss trade and other ties this week, while neighboring India held a conference for regional countries on Wednesday that was skipped by China and Pakistan. In news from Pakistan, the opposition parties in Pakistan have termed the postponement of Thursday's joint parliament session as their victory after the ruling PTI government failed to gather required support from allies to pass controversial electoral reform bills. Opposition leaders said the Prime Minister Imran Khan opted out of the session as he had foreseen defeat as they had declared to corner him over rising inflation in the country. The opposition parties in Pakistan have termed the postponement of Thursday's joint parliament session as their victory after Prime Minister Imran Khan's government struggled to ensure presence of required number of members and due to reservations shown by its allies over the proposed electoral reform bills. Pakistan People's Party or PPP Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari taking to Twitter said the captain ran away blaming Imran Khan or running away from debate. PMLN President and Opposition Leader in National Assembly Shabazz Sharif said the government has been badly beaten on its black laws. This came a day after the opposition had declared it would stand united in the parliament to block the controversial electoral reforms and raise voices against all-time high inflation and unemployment in the country. और दोनों में ऑपोजिशन मुजदा ऑपोजिशन के वोट उनसे कहीं ज्यादा थे और फिर यकीनन ये काले कानून ये बदनीति से लाने जाते थे मीनवाइल ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज हैव कंटिन्यूड टू होल्ड अ सीरीज ऑफ प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द फ्रीक्वेंट प्राइस राइज इन द कंट्री व्हिच लोकल्स क्लेम हैज मेड लाइफ डिफिकल्ट पाकिस्तान्स एनुअल इन्फ्लेशन रेट स्टूड एट 9.19% इन अक्टूबर the statistics bureau said last week prices of food items and almost all other essential commodities have witnessed an increase in recent days moving on to news from afghanistan in a us drone strike gone awry during the chaos of the afghanistan troop withdrawal the ahmadi family lost 10 of its members including seven children the pentagon said it would look into reparations and evacuate the family but two months later they say they have heard nothing from washington it's been over 2 months since an american drone strike hit the home of ahmadi family by mistake and 10 including 7 children were killed in the chaos of the troop withdraw from afghanistan by the us and its allies pieces of charred wreckage and a damaged suv with broken windows and a flat tire set near kabul home all painful reminders of the august 29 tragedy the brother of one of the victims says the family wants to know why after all this time they haven't heard a word back from the pentagon which said after the disaster that it would look into paying reparations to the family and getting them out of the country باید حالا ما را که گفته بود روز اول که باید یا ما را یا را میکشیم باید بکشند به خاطر که ما هرجی میریم مرکز ما را پرسان میکنند تا حالا شما را نکشیدین به شما غرامت ندادین باید شما را وقت میکشیدن امریکا به شما غواده کده بود که شما را میکشیم به زودترین وقت اینا به زودترین وقتش اینا دونی ما سی ما شد که میگذاره US forces thought they were targeting an Islamic state suicide bomber. Instead, they targeted Ajmal's brother Zamarai Ahmadi, who was actually working for an NGO based in the states called Nutrition and Education International. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin himself has publicly said the family is innocent, but last week the military inspector general's office said it didn't believe this was a case of criminal negligence and that no disciplinary action was needed for the forces involved. According to the American Civil Liberties Union, also involved in the case though, representing the NGO says the Ahmadi family has repeatedly asked for transparency and received none. In the meantime, the Ahmadi family waits hoping justice arrives. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh's former chief justice has been sentenced in absentia to 11 years in jail for corruption in a case that opposition groups say 
is politically motivated. 70-year-old Surendra Kumar Sinha, the first Hindu chief justice of the Muslim-majority nation, was found guilty along with 10 others by a Dhaka court for allegedly laundering around 471,000 US dollars in connivance with the officials of a private bank. Sinha headed the Supreme Court when it ruled in 2017 that Parliament could not sack judges, a move hailed by lawyers as safeguarding judicial independence. He left Bangladesh for North America in late 2017, alleging he had been forced to step aside following the landmark ruling. Campaigners have said his departure was a massive blow to the credibility of the country's judiciary and accused Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government of going after Sinha. Moving on to news from Nepal. Nepal's Minister for Culture and Tourism Prem Bahadur Ali and India's Ambassador to Nepal Vinay Mohan Quatra on Thursday flagged off a motorcycle rally from Pashupati Nath Temple to Kashi Vishwanath in India to mark the celebrations of 75 years of India's independence. The rally aims to showcase deep and timeless people-to-people -people ties between the two countries. A motorcycle rally to commemorate 75th years of India's independence was flicked off from Kathmandu on Thursday by Nepal's Minister for Culture and Tourism, Prem Bahadur Ali and India's Ambassador to Nepal, Vinay Mohan Quatra. Nearly 50 Indian and Nepali motorbike enthusiasts are participating in the motorcycle rally, which began from the religious site of Pashupatinath and will conclude near India's Kashi Vishwanath Temple on November 13. The rally aims to strengthen the deep and timeless people-to-people -people connect between New Delhi and Kathmandu and further strengthen mutual cultural relations. Prachin Sabeta ko saharo bane Kashi Vishwanath Prachin Dharmik Shiksha ko saharo. Yehi karan le Nepal ra Bharat sadiyo purano samband rahi aaye ko cha. Bhasa, saitya, dharma, parampara, sanskriti ra riti divaaz le garda Dubai desh ko. This comes as both the countries earlier this week resumed bus services between India and Nepal after a gap of one and a half years which were closed due to COVID-19. Nepal's army chief is also on a four-day official visit to India to boost bilateral defence ties. Hindu devotees across India and Nepal on Thursday converged at the banks of rivers and water bodies to offer prayers, pay obeisance to the sun god Surya and break their fast on the final day of four-day-long Chhat festival. In Indian capital, devotees took a holy dip in frothy, toxic waters of river Yamuna, one of the holiest rivers for Hindus and also among the most polluted in the world to mark the festival. On the last day of the four-day-long Chhat festival, Hindu devotees in several Indian states on Thursday gathered on the banks of rivers and water bodies to offer prayers to the rising sun and perform the Usha Arg ritual. According to the tradition, devotees pray to the sun god Surya after bathing in a flowing water body in the VRs. Hindus in capital New Delhi took a holy dip and celebrated the festival in the toxic fruity waters of Yamuna River. The toxic foam floating on the surface of River Yamuna in the Indian capital has been making headlines over the past few years, which activists say is a result of untreated, unmonitored sewage dumping into the river. In Bihar state, devotees gathered on the banks of Ganga River in capital Patna to perform Chhat Puja rituals. While in Jharkhand Stranchi, devotees offered prayers standing waist deep in water for the longevity and well-being of their family members in Subarnareka River. Chhat Puja holds significance for married women who observe fast and stand in waist deep water and present religious offerings to the sun god. In Nepal, fasting women taking dips in the water with a basket full of offering to the sun god were a common sight at lakes in Kathmandu Valley during the Chhat festival. Women here consider Chhat as a festival of purity, goodwill and faith. 
The trend of celebrating the Chhat festival is believed to have started in the hilly regions of Nepal after the political change of 1990, when democracy was restored in the Himalayan nation. Devotees offered ergo to the rising sun on Thursday, concluding the festival with wishes for prosperity, happiness, well-being and long life of family members. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.